Welcome to Happy Homes and Gardens. My name is Daphne Royce. I'm your host. I am a real estate broker, architecture, and interior designer. Modern nature creates the most beautiful phenomena. The ocean waves create high tide and low tides, which enrich sea life, coastal formations, and peacefulness. If you lucky, you will find man-made mandala art displayed on the sandy beaches, which lasts until high tide swallows. Every kindner is here to share his vision of artistic creations. Hi, good morning, good Emery. Morning. Tell us about you and what inspired you to create mandala art, poetry, and music. Uh, thank you, Daphne. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you this morning. I am um, I'm inspired by nature, uh, finding a presence in nature that um, creates an inspiration, uh, an inspirational moment for me. And I found over the years of doing my art that I uh, have been able to have this wonderful presence of being. Uh, by the sea and hearing the waves and listening to the sand as I am doing creations um, or working with stones and and kelp and shells um, at various scales. And um, I, what I love most about the work I do is uh, in the inspirational moment, I get to share with people who are finding something unexpected as they're uh, on their walk along the shoreline um, uh, and get to see something that they um, uh, kind of brings them away from wherever their minds were into the present moment as well. Your creativity is to connect art and nature. What is the meaning of mandala to your creation? Uh, the mandalas themselves uh, started as small works with stone and then some sand drawing and uh, they grew into um, labyrinths and walkable abstract art. Um, I love the circular parts of the mandalas and the centering part of the mandalas. It's it's much a meditation practice for me. Uh, it's also be, because... It's um, at low tide. Um, I've had to um, develop a good practice of letting go. And sometimes an unexpected wave uh, sweeps away the work that I was working on, or um, I get to enjoy it and watch people enjoy it for a while. And then the, the, the tide will come and take it away. And, and then again, it's a new, it's a new canvas. Uh, it's, it's like beginning a new day. Is a high tide always count at the end of the day? Uh, it varies. Um, you know, the, the, the flow of the tides are really important to the work I do. And not always do I get a low tide at, um, in the early morning or, or at sunset. So um, some tides are much higher than others. Uh, some tides bring a lot of debris and the sand's not very workable. Uh, other tides, like the king tides, are wonderful because I get these wonderful flows that clear the beach of all the debris, uh, at least where the areas that I like to work on. And then I get these super low tides that gives me a lot of canvas to work on, so to speak. What material do you like to use to create your artwork? Uh, the materials I use... Um, uh, are the different effects that I can create on the sand with the different tools that I utilize. I, I have a rake and a walking stick and um, a hoop hoe. Um, I have a leaf shaped gardening tool. Um, uh, I actually, I use a squeegee sometimes uh, at the end of a pole and I, I use a, um, a rope and a, uh, an irrigation valve to kind of create a center that I walk around to create these nice circles. So uh, these tools um, uh, help me shape the sand in different ways and give different textures. Um, I also like to work with uh, whatever's there in the moment, the shape of the shoreline, um, 
the stone elements that may be there, uh, the kelp that may be on the beach. Um, uh, sometimes I'll bring pompous grass or I'll bring um, autumn leaves and I'll incorporate those into the work that I'm doing. Um, it has a beautiful effect on on the piece that's um, quite unusual. You normally uh, create those arts on the West Coast, California beaches? Yes, uh, I haven't done any work outside of California. Uh, I've done uh, creative work in uh, North County, San Diego, at Avila Beach in San Luis Obispo area. In- and up in Big Sur, um, Carmel, and up in um, uh, San Francisco. Uh, usually, I'm looking for a place that I ha- I can get some elevation above the work so I can get a good picture of it. Uh, and soon, hopefully, I'll get a drone so I can do some aerial uh, photography, which would be really sweet. Oh, throughout the California coast, so what kind of materials you normally find on the beach? Uh, I will find um, kelp of different colors, um, beautiful seagrass. Uh, I can find um, various shapes of stones, depending on my location, and uh, various sizes of those stones. Um, and I incorporate them in different ways and different plant materials that I might find uh, along my way to the beach. Do you find a lot of seashells on the beach that you can use to create your art? That's unusual because most of the shells on the beach are either picked over or they are, um, they're broken. Uh, But sometimes I can do some, if there are enough of them, I do some mosaic work with the shells. Even if they're broken, if you kind of, work with them and create um, a pattern, you can get some really interesting effects. I don't do that with um, my big scale uh, work so much, uh, unless I'm trying to create um, a very special, more intimate uh, center to the mandala. So I I might do a labyrinth walk around the outside of the mandala to have a journey for people to arrive at the center and when they get to the center, I like to have something, even if it's very small, um, uh, as, as an arrival point for them to just spend a moment and be quiet and um, maybe listen to the waves differently uh, or listen to the wind differently or hear the birds sing, which they might not otherwise do if they're busy along their way, walking on the shore or running or looking at their phone, which happens quite a bit. I remember I went to maybe Stenson Beach or North or they got Bay maybe. I did find a lot of sand dollars. Yeah, sand dollars are fun. If you can find um, find a, a number of them, sand dollars would make really elegant um, uh, center altars, if you will, for, for mandalas. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've done a, a large scale sand dollar as a mandala. And all, uh, at one time, that was that was really fun to try to create the the image of a, a sand dollar, but do it that was in a scale that's like you know forty or fifty feet, and get the texture of the sand just right and, and the patterns just right. Yeah. So, where did you start your original beach artwork? My start on the beach artwork uh, was. An inspiration, I was um, sharing some time with a dear friend on the beach and my friend drew uh, uh, a duck (laughs) on the sand and um, it reminded me how much I used to love to draw and how little effort that I was putting into my creative side of, of my life. I had been in career, I'd been focused on work. Work. Um, being in urban environments, I wasn't in nature enough. And um, I started doing these smaller drawings. Um, they gradually became more abstract and larger and more spiritual in nature. 
And this practice of meditation and being present and feeling the inspiration of the moment in a specific place that I find on the beach um, kind of grew into this um, larger and larger scale of work. And as I was doing that and watching people come by and enjoy seeing them, I started to look at my pieces in a way that uh, how could I make them more interactive? And that's when I started working um, with uh, creating labyrinth flows within the abstract work of the mandala and the artwork that, that I was doing so that people could walk into them. And a lot of times people walk into them unexpectedly. They're just looking at their phone or they just, they just walk right through. Um, uh, sometimes their dogs run through. Um, and I, have just come to accept that as a, a welcome addition to the art that I'm working on. And um, I'll use paw prints and uh, footprints uh, as a way to create uh, uh, kind of a journey through some of the artwork that I do. And uh, that, that's uh, a good flow of starting small, um, but uh, being open to inspiration and creativity. Some of your beach artwork is large in size. How long does it take you to create your art? Um, depending on the level of detailing that I would like to do, it's usually uh, one to three hours that I'm on the beach. And um, I'll probably spend another hour or so just enjoying the photography of it and enjoying watching people interact with it. And um, uh, a lot of it depends on the tide. So a super low tide gives me a lot more time to uh, do the work and do the detailing. Uh, sometimes I get down to the beach with very little time and I'm, I'm um, a little hurried and trying to create a piece of art uh, before the tide will come and sweep it away. So. How would you share uh, your arts with the public? Uh, outside of the present moment of the art uh, being um, an expressive art experience that people can watch me create, uh, I, I do take photographs of, of my work. Um, that's the only way the work is preserved. And since the work itself isn't planned, I don't like have pre-drawings of it or anything like that. I, I'm really creating in the moment. And um, I've done some photography of them and I've showed the uh, images um, at uh, coffee shops, um, yoga studios. Um, I haven't done any at a spa or anything like that, but the mandalas tend to... Um, uh, lend themselves to um, show well in, in those uh, environments. And, and I've, I've been very blessed with the opportunities to uh, share the art that way. Um, also have a website and um, I share the art that way as well. Why do you decide to make a mandala art on the beach? It could be sure lived by the high tide. I really loved... Um, well, I love water. I love being by the water. And I, I love the presencing of finding a spot on the beach where I feel some form of spiritual energy. And um, I, I'll, I'll take a few moments to pick a, a spot. You know, I might move three or four or five feet, depending on my perspective of where I might take the picture from or, you know, how far away from the shoreline I am. Um, that's, you know, a, a presencing thing and, um, it's a meditation. I've learned to hear the sound of the shoreline quite differently, um, than I used to. I, I hear the sound of the sand, different sands have different, um, songs, if you will, uh, as I'm raking, uh, different strokes of, of my brush which is a rake or a stick, have different sound effects. Um, so it's been really a wonderful uh, presencing for me. And, um, and then the whole process of creating something, but knowing I'm going to let go of it. 
um, these are things that um, drew me to doing the larger scale uh, work. Um, there's a Tibetan practice of mandalas uh, that um, the t- Tibetan monks will work uh, for weeks and weeks on sand mandalas of beautiful colors. And then once they're done, they just let it go. Um, so, so it is a wonderful practice. And um, my, my work is on scale, but maybe not on time, but on uh, size. It's, it's the same kind of a practice of uh, acknowledging the ephemeral moments of, of life. Yeah. Why does it spend so much time to create art and purpose just let it go? Um, I think there's a lot of... Um, practice western practice of having things and um i found that that wasn't as fulfilling as sharing and um allowing the sea to take the art away and create a new space for something new to flow and that's part of the sharing is if i create something and i just have it to myself um i don't create space for future inspiration and um, this practice of the letting go or letting it flow through or sharing allows me to be more open to what's next, what, what next inspiration might flow to me. So um, I found a lot of joy in the presencing of, of the artistic creative process. And I found a lot of, um, uh, joy in, in the discovery of what it is that I might create on any given day and not have a preconceived plan. So there is a practice of living um, that, that flows from the work that I do. And I feel that it helps me be more open in, in work and relationship and um, uh, when I'm enjoying nature. So what is the largest art in dimensions that you created? I've done some mandalas that are probably 100, 120 feet um, across. Um, I, I've done a, a whale that was almost a half a football field. Um, I just followed the contour of, of the cliffs coming down to the beach and the shoreline. Um, you know, those are the largest scale works that I've done. Um, They're not always circles. Some of them are really abstractive uh, elements of showing the water and the land coming together. Uh, Some of them are creating flowers and um, uh, like a gathering of mandalas uh, over a larger space. So they're not always just a singular um, circle. Um, and, and those tend to have more of an abstract flow and feel to them. So any plan for your creations to be more focused um, in the picture? I'd like to continue to explore the, um, the abstract, non-circular uh, elements of the work that I do, um, creating different pathways and different experiences for people to enjoy. Um, I, I want to use the negative space on the sand, uh, in those elements a little bit differently than I have in the past, but I've also found that I want to return to doing some smaller, more elegant detailed pieces that are bringing together other elements of earth, um, and stone and, and, and kelp and, and shells, um, they're, they take just as much time, but they're a lot more detailed. And um, uh, I, for me, they, they bring a different um, experience of peace and meditation. And um, uh, I really, really enjoy working with stones at the beach, especially when they're wet uh, with color. Um, most of the beach stones you'll find are chalky and a um, I like to find the colorful stones and, and work with them while they're still in their kind of glorious color. So, 
Tell us more about your poetry and music in the madalac.com website. Thank you for asking that. Uh, a lot of the artistry that I um, have uh, in the mandala work um, is inspirational from or to poetry or music. And um, these are all just inspirational channels that flow through me. So sometimes I will do a, a poem and then next weekend I'll be on the beach and I'll to do um, an abstract art mandala piece that flows from the poem. Uh, sometimes I'll have an experience on the beach or experience in the garden, um, uh, sharing time with dear friends, and that flows into a poetic moment of expression or um, flows into a melody that comes to me that... Um, I, I've embraced. So I like weaving them together because I feel it brings a more immersive experience than just a singular expression of art. So um, pairing an image of work that I've done at the beach or pairing with a poem or pairing a poem with um, a smaller mandala work or pairing a poem with a piano uh, they're they're all kind of intertwined, and I think they create a, a more immersive environment for people to enjoy. I have a question for you about the art on the beach. This beach could be part of a sand will be reached by the waves. Mm -hmm. The other part might always be dry, very sandy, harder to walk on. Do you prefer that the art will create on the beach side that can be swallowed by the waves? Have you ever thought to create the art, just be there, maybe be there for a longer time? That's a great question. I haven't really explored um, working further up on the beach, and mostly because the sand is very duffy. And it's very hard to get a good image in because it's all dry. And one of the um, benefits of being, working closer to the water's edge is the sand on the top has a, um, a lighter color, but not its true sandy color because it's still moist. But when you rake into it, it has this beautiful dark color underneath. So you get much better contrast. Um, and um, you can, you know, create your creations have more definition uh, with that contrast. So I, I, I know that um, the work will disappear with the tide coming in. Um, but that's part of the process that I enjoy. So um, uh, sand art further up on the beach where it's stuffy is it's, it's a little harder to get it to stay there. Um, even with the wind, it can, you know, quickly disappear. So. Do you have a particular seasons that you prefer to do to work on your art? Mm. That's an uh, interesting question. I love autumn because I can incorporate the autumn colors into the work that I'm doing. Uh, springtime, I may work more with plants and flower, and um, uh, I think the seasons have a different influence on how I, uh, what I might create. Um, summertime is a little harder to do at the beach because there are just so many people that are flocking to the beaches. So finding an open area that's not, you know, already walked on is a little hard harder to find, but I, I do enjoy the longer days because I, I, it gives me an extended window for finding the right flow of tide to do my work. Um, winter is a lovely time to go down the beach because there, there are less people there uh, and the sand is more moist and, and workable. So each season gives me something special to work with um, uh, and inspires me in a different way. And I went on your website, I do find some art was created in the garden instead of on the beach. Yes. Do you have a preferences? Because I, I'm sure the material is, they are different. Yeah, they are very different. Um, I, 
I like doing the work in gardens, especially um, like a Japanese garden, because there's something very Zen about the meditation process that I uh, that I go through. Um, and it affords me a very different um, approach to doing the work because uh, I am not necessarily um, drawing in on the earth and into the earth. Uh, I'm more creating a layer of artistry on, on top of the earth. Um, in the gardens, it afford me a chance to um, create an interaction between um, the, the garden elements themselves, whether it's the stone placement or um, the various uh, plant materials that are shaping the garden. Um, plus, they get to stay there a lot longer. So I'm not letting go of them quite so quickly. Um, I can come back um, and enjoy them, you know, for a number of days, if not uh, weeks. So um, working in the garden areas um, uh, affords me a, a different flow of creativity and uh, something I don't necessarily have to totally let go of so quickly. Do you post all your work on your website, nadalacy.com? I have posted most of my work, but not all of my work. And um, uh, it's it's a matter of making time to update and share on, on the website. Um, and uh, I, I do go in there from time to time just to um, add the uh, newer elements. Um, I, it's just another channel for sharing and allowing people to explore. And um, perhaps they can't make it to the beach or they're not even near a beach, but they can still experience being at the beach um, through the images on the website. Yeah. Well, Emery, I really appreciate your time today and sharing your creativity side of the Mandela art within my audience. Well, thank you for allowing me to share this moment with you and to share with, with others. Um, I, I really hope people will enjoy exploring uh, the, the artistry and the creativity and perhaps find some peace um, or some joy or something unexpected in, in their day by um, uh, enjoying the work. It is autumn now, so I assume that we're going to find more of your art on the beaches. Yes, I'm. I'm definitely have in mind incorporating a lot of autumn in my uh, my work in the next uh, couple of months. So, um, just one last question. So, in the next couple of months, what area beaches that's possible to find your art? Uh, definitely Avila Beach. Um, I, I love working there because there's a river that flows out and the sand is pretty level and there's a nice bridge I can get above the work and get some really wonderful photos looking out on the ocean. Um, but I'm going to explore Northern California coasts in the next few weeks, um, perhaps uh, the Oregon coast and um, uh, see if I can find some new beaches uh, to, to do some art. So you, you you might you might come across uh, a mandala by me. Um, there are other mandala artists that are out there, um, sand artists, uh, if you will, and um, uh, just encourage you to enjoy the moment as that creation is there, and um, hopeful that it brings uh, brings some joy and kindness into the day. So just a curiosity, if you go north, go northern California, maybe a little bit further north, would you ever think you want to create art on the snow? Oh, that's a great question. I have seen uh, an artist who's done um, snow mandalas. That's very uh, inspirational. I'd love to try to do that. It, it obviously doesn't snow much along the California coast. 
But um, I think I need to get a drone first because they, I, I could tell that uh, with snow, it's very hard to get a contrast in, in shades. So um, unless you're aerially above the work that you're doing. But um, there'd be something very uh, childlike in the creativity of trudging through the snow and creating patterns. Um, I think that would be really fun to do. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.